So without further ado, our next speaker in the session is Fabio Cruz Sanchez. I hope I pronounced that one right there. Yeah. So Fabio <laughs> is joining us all the way from France. So again, a testament to this being a more of an international event. Um, so Fabio is a research associate uh, at the ERPI laboratory of the University of De Lorraine. Is that my French pronunciation may be pretty poor, so apologies again if uh, that's uh, mispronounced. <laughs> so Fabio's been working in the area of distributed recycling via additive manufacturing and um, as a possible social technological transition towards more sustainable manufacturing approach for the future and where we could go on that front. Um, I will now hand over to, to Fabio and the floor is yours, my friend. Thank you very much, Mohamed. Thank you very much for joining me, Baba, for joining the, 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 the workshop. Thanks very much for, for, uh, for inviting me in this, uh, in this discussion about the design, uh, responsible design for additive manufacturing. Uh, uh, what I wanted to stress is that um, this uh, notion of uh, uh, distributed recycling via additive manufacturing, um, these are some ideas that we are working here in the University of Lorraine and with some partners. And the main point that I wanted to stress is that what we see from Michael is that this is a technical challenge, but also what most important, what I think is, is very, very, very interesting is that systemic, systemic challenge, because it's not only the technical way that we are going to go in out with the plastic waste. Um, you see my presentation just for, let's say, Okay, cool. Okay. okay. All the fire away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to introduce myself because this is the first time that I'm that I'm talk. But what I wanted to stress is that I structured the discussion in four elements. So the major elements that I want to present is that we need to think about what is the societal challenge for sustainable manufacturing. It's not only additive manufacturing, but also to imagine the whole industrial configuration. That is the the, the tricky element that I want to, to put some present some ideas. <clears throat> Based on that, we present I present what, what we are doing here in the University of Lorraine and the approach of distributed recycling and how these ideas, conceptual elements, we put it in frame, but put it in reality in the European project that we are participating. And uh, Based on that, I hope some give some elements of discussion or future consideration to, to, to discuss. Um, Fabio Cruz, I'm Colum middle Colombian, middle French. I work as a research associate at the University of Lorraine. I have the luck to work in a laboratory that is talk about innovation. And this is uh, in the research and also in the uh, engineering school. And the RP and the NSGC, which is the, the, the acronyms in French, they developed the Lorraine Fab Living Lab, which is a research platform for demonstration of this innovation. And I want to stress that innovation, as we define, as we see, is that we can we we can uh, talk about the innovation as a product. Okay, what is the characteristics that a product or service uh, innovative? but also to imagine that there is a process. So how is the recipes, the practices that a process of innovation can be made inside a company? But more profoundly is that this uh, notion of complex system. And well, we are French, so we, we, we read the Edgar Moran philosophy <laughs> and that uh, this connection in the complex system and the interrelationship, how the, we can, as a society, we are interconnected. At this connection, we need to understand what is the connection between, between an in this industrial system and the biological or, or natural ecosystem, for instance. And at the end, but one, one of the discussion is about the, this innovation process as a territorial asset, for instance, but uh, Silicon Valley is the Silicon, is a territorial asset for, for California. In France, we have wood, <laughs> our wood valley. So we are developing some process, some projects around that. So that, that is important for me to stress that I work in an innovation laboratory, working in this system level. 
<clears throat> because uh, I started in the 3D printing world uh, more or less 10 years, yeah, 11 years ago, more or less. I arrived at France in 2012, and in the engineering school, I had the luck that I participate in the creation of the first uh, fab lab inside an engineering school. In that moment, in 2005, the scientific discussion that was based on in this innovation process, there is a discussion of open innovation how we can create, co-create ideas, solutions about uh, anything, but with the final users. And the thing is that we see in that moment, 2005 and, two and the, the next, the years after, this notion of Fab Lab, this notion of a maker movement, this notion how we can materialize this co-creation process. And yeah, based on that one, we, we, we see the maker moving today, taking a, a little place, a role in the society. I had the chance also to work with Emmanuel Guilos in that moment, 2012. Uh, he was our fab manager, but at the moment we didn't know how to call it. <laughs> but um, uh, Emmanuel, he, he worked, in, well, he's a maker. He developed uh, the first pliable, uh, foldable, rep wrap machine and they document he documented in the in the wiki of rep wrap he also started the idea of the rep wrap trip um three to map what is the the convolution the the divergent elements of uh, different machines and that was a learning for me that was my starting point because I learned I get into the this notion of 3d printing war and the thing is that the main the the first thing that I did that I could uh, uh, offer to the scientific community is to validate this notion that open source additive manufacturing is not only a gadget, because at that moment was seen, was perceived as a gadget, but it's a robust, a robust technique, it's a robust tool. So in, the, in that paper, we, what we put it is that starting from a, a methodology, from a geometric benchmarking model, experimental design, fabrication, and statistical analysis. We put it in the scene, in the same level of the machining or, or, or traditional manufacturing process. They have more or less, they have the same accuracy. And that's, that was my first, my first brick on the wall in this development of open source uh, technology, if I can say. In that moment, I make aware, I read, <laughs> read uh, certainly the, the advances are from you, from, from England, from the Adrian Boyer that is going to be in the next presentation about the Rebra project, about the philosophy, about the how this transition of the, okay, how can I imagine a self-replicated manufacturing machine? So the design thing, design selection of rapid prototyping, the fuse deposition model, modeling at the moment, and also to, he pointed out it's very, very clever this idea because this aspect is going to reduce the cost and we see all that we prove that the way they hey, put it in the in the in the doctoral thesis at that moment, 10, 10 12 years ago, is happening <laughs> right now. And but what I wanted to stress also is that maybe we can also imagine this aspect in another brief England uh, England uh, contribution is the paradox of Jevons. So William Jevons, 200 years ago, more or less. So in the moment that we make a unit efficiency, the reduction of cost, the reduction of material and the 3D printing is going to be optimized in the unit level, maybe we are going to have a rebound effect. Maybe we are going to have a deployment of a lot of consumption in the global level. And this is something that is happening. And Thomas Birchel from the Lancaster University talks about that, the future of additive manufacturing that we are, we are developing that today. So we use additive manufacturing for prototyping purposes. That's, that's clear. We, thanks for, 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 for 3D printing, but we have fab labs, we have some new spaces of manufacturing, some shapes to fabricate elements. And eventually, uh, one day, I don't know, <laughs> maybe my child is going to, to say, we have these desktop factories at home. 
But the thing is that at the end of the day, we are going to use material. We are going to consume materials. And this is something that I want to stress because well, believe whether or not we are going to consume plastic in this case. <clears throat> so that's why that uh, leads me to the what is the societal challenge for sustainable manufacturing? And I wanted to present well, very quickly, you know, the uh, exposition. So the concept of Anthropocene. And this is a very, very interesting discussion uh, scientific discussion in the era geologies and the era uh, scientifics and ge geological scientifics about analyzing the earth systems and see how is the uh, geological air. And in this, uh, but there's, this discussion is defining what we are living today as a, as a current era. And to prove that humanity is a geological force. It's not only a biological that is taking some resource. The humans, as proven, is change our environment. And this is the risk, and this is the, the, the element, but because we have a uh, relative uh, stability era, the Holocene, but given this consumption of resource, it is proved by many, many indicators, if I can say, that since uh, 1950, everything is exploding, everything is uh, growing up exponentially. So the population, the urban pollution, the transport, communication, McDonald's, <laughs> uh, everything, every indicator is showing the same register. So the idea is that we need to acknowledge that we as a human has an impact geological in the third, and also that this transition we need to take into account in the design process, in the design of industrial system, how we are going to come up to, to manage this industrial element in a global system. And there is also in a discussion about this notion of Anthropocene, that this is maybe not the Anthropocene, it's not every human that is fault, but it's maybe the Capitalocene fault, some, some subset of humans that develop a capital that are more or less responsible. And in that needs to, put, it needs to frame also the, the, the political elements, how the industrial manufacturing has to be uh, designed for the, for the future. <laughs> and and uh, I'm not going to say much more about that. We know that the, 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 the societal issues in the reduction of the CO2 consumption. So it's not a surprise that um, the European Commission and the programs, at least here in France, uh, calls for climate neutrality and everything that we can make to improve, to uh, optimize or to uh, consume less energy is valid for the for the equation. Is valid for to our next uh, generation, um, uh, but survival, if I can say. Um, but also, what I wanted to focus also the discussion is the plastic pollution and this notion of how we can put in the plastic since 1950 in the environment. And we have some layers already more or less documented that maybe if in the in the 3000 year geologists in the future are going to the, discover these layers. So how we can imagine that this plastic pollution is going to be tackled? And that is the, the point. And more, more difficult than that, and that is something that the, the, the research here in Montpellier and the University of South from, from, the, from uh, France, there is a gap in knowledge about the micro nano plastics. We don't know, actually, we don't know how is the behavior. And this is the very risk, the systemic risk of this plastic, of this material. So we need to come up with some better design of system to take into consideration the impact in the long, long, long run of the material. So more or less what I wanted to stress is that we are, what we are living, what we are doing is that we need to improve, we need to include this notion of circularity in the micro, meso, macro level. And it is not only the Ellen MacArthur definition, or it's not only from the 
European definition. There is a there is an interesting uh, paper from Calistofia about what are the discourse, what are because this notion of circularity is not new. It's something that is uh, have been talked uh, a lot sixty years ago, starting from the yeah from the uh, well, the historical paper of traditional uh, strategy of the commons, and popping up from the industrial ecology. Um, I'm not going to <laughs> enter in every element. What I wanted to say is that it's very interesting that what we map this paper or this or the discussion in the scientific literature is that we start from a technocentric circular economy approach, how we can imagine technical elements to recycle and to optimize the loops. But uh, more profound is how we, we imagine a circular society. So what are the values that we are going to put in place or that are going to be put it in explicit society to accept our place in, in the in the in the third in the earth system. Just to make up uh, a little focus that I think is very interesting is very more more holistic approach is Kate Rayburn. She's economist from Oxford and Cambridge, if I'm not wrong. And she proposed, she takes these ecological advancements on planetary boundaries, and she proposed also this notion of donuts economics. So how we can make a society that are limited by the planet boundaries, but also the minimal, the minimal social, the social foundation, which she, she states. So the water, food, health, uh, assurance, education, but at the same time, this this mini this sweet spot do not transgress the climate change, the ocean acidification, the chemical pollu pollution, etc. So there is nine planet boundaries that I, that I'm working on that are more or less est established. And the thing is that the University of Leeds is talking about this good life in planetary boundaries. It's interesting. Uh, what is, is surprising to know that the world, but in the most of the planet, uh, planetary boundaries, they are surconsumed. They are transgressive. They are not transgressive. There are transgression of this, this consumption of uh, of natural resources. And what is more interesting, or what I think is the most profound challenge, our society and what the, our technological system of the design is that we need to come up with some system that um, uh, arrives to achieve the, the social environments as here without transgressing the number of um, boundaries. Here I put it France. So France is relative industrial uh, country, but this industrial uh, is social achievement is paid because they they use uh, some uh, amount of energy that is uh, that is that is um, considerable. So this is for me this is the, the the most important thing to element in the global in the global end. So I want to reduce this very global approach to what we are doing. So what we are trying to make put in mind, given this context, is the sustainable this. The recycling via additive manufacturing. The main idea, the main, and as connecting with the with the Michael, the presentation is that we think that we need to develop closer loop approach for um, for plastic recycling via additive manufacturing. So the thing is that this element, this uh, step, this idea, we need to tackle in the multiple perspectives. Certainly, we have to do the technical aspect. So we have technical aspect and the logistical aspect. Technical aspect is how is going to be the behavior from a virgin material just until, until the, the application and make the, the cycles. And the logistical is, okay, once what I have the material, how is going to be the collection? Who is going to be the stakeholders? In what, it, in what extent, what kind of uh, transport do I, do, do I have to use? So this kind questions. Between 2013 and 2016, my, 
PhD project was this first technical validation. I worked with a chemical laboratory here in Nancy, and the main idea, the main output from my from the thesis was to say, okay, we are going to start from a virgin material, uh, the PLA, because the PLA is more, <laughs> the, as a case study is the most used, and we are going to compare the injection and the 3D printing process using two, 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 two 3D printers. Um, what we did, well, what I did was five recycling cycles, so closer loop recycling cycles, and I map the technical, the mechanical degradation and the chemical degradation. And what I wanted to, what I wanted to say is that maybe we are not going to recycle five times because it was very, very, very hard. But at least if we can uh, three times, is an enormous, enormous impact in the in the environment. So I think we can do at least three times, and that is some that I put it in, and I I wanted to to express that this is technical feasible. San Pablo Pablo Santander, the PhD, what he proposed is that okay, if I going to have a, a recycle or three or three three times. What we need to imagine is okay. What kind of niche? What kind of plastic? And where this plastic is going to be localized? And based on that, okay, how is going to in, as a as a strategist? How is going to be the the, the relationship between the, my technical variables and my collection variables? So this this is something that we, we validated also in a paper about the using a, a traditional mill optimization approach. But at least we are putting a, a table about the what are the main elements. And we know that environmental is more about 60 or 70 percent and the reduction of the dioxide carbon regarding or with respect to that traditional centralized recycling process. And at the same time, we are trying to implement the open hardware because I, I work in a chemical laboratory with scientific and very expensive. So how we can reduce the cost? That is something that Joshua and, and are going to talk a, a little bit later. Sorry, Fabio, <laughs> just to say you've got a five minute warning. The, okay, the time so what, I want, what I wanted to stress is that what we come up is that this conceptual framework into uh, two years ago, we need we think that for recycling for additive manufacturing, yeah, the main idea is going to from a post consumer plastic to a product, and this element is most or, most or le, more, more or less the element that the scientific community are doing. So with different materials, with different composites, this is the traditional approach. What I wanted to say is that what we think we need to think is how this product, how this process is going to impact the territory in the environmental, social, economical, technical, and political system. And based on that two levels, we need to establish a some more uh, organized, more technical, feasible, uh, distributed approach. This is too complex. This is very, very, very hard to do in one shot. For that, we are trying to map this reduction. I'm going to pass a little bit quicker. But what we are doing is to reduce the complexity in some layers, in some technical levels. So we are trying to define what is the machine, what is the technical, uh, yeah, the the machine that can help in that process. And we certainly, for sure, fused granular fabrication is one of the major inputs to, to, to explore. We need to also to include, okay, what is the what is the application? And we did uh, uh, some application in the prototyping purposes for recycled material. So we can map this uh, application for multiple type of materials. In the recovery processes, we is recently we developed, we are putting a hardware X and collector and a smart collector in order to facilitate the collection process. If we can know where is the source of waste, more or less in real time, we can optimize the, the parkour of the, of the collection. We also identify that how are the indicators that we need to put in place, kind of a dashboard to map the implementation. 
and that is something that Polish this this uh, in this year in the technical, political, and social indicators that we need to take into account for the implementation. So more or less, what I want to stress is that this is a working process. This is going to be a working process, and this leads me to the what we are doing in the reality. So we are working in a real in a, a European project that is called Inedit, Open Innovation Ecosystem for Do It Together process. The main the main idea behind that is that how we can transpose the do it yourself approaches from maker movement fab labs to a, what we call it do it together approach, but most for the enterprises and the local local industry. So what we are doing is that okay, what is that? What is the do it together approach? How we can formalize? And what we are trying to make is this demonstrator, thanks to the project that we are developing. This is a project with eight countries and for three years. COVID didn't help, but we are trying to do our best. And for that, what we are trying to implement is this recycling um, uh, approach in a third place. In a yeah, third place is in Berlin. So there is a space that the, the, the municipality put it for, for designers. And we have one space, one 50, 60 met, uh, uh, cellular space for recycling. And there is designers, there is a, a manufacturers of wood. And we try to make the synergy with them. And this, that synergy, it's related to a notion of co-creation and notion of operation of manufacturing and just i hope to i'm going to pass a bit <coughs> for instance what we are trying to demonstrate is that okay imagine that we collect this workbench that is going to be thrown away there was a, a designer that didn't use i need one <laughs> I needed one in, in our in our local space. And well, there is a technical answer is that how we can use um, in virtual reality to co-create. So for using co-creation, so we scan the, the, the object that we are going to repair or grade. We hope that these technologies or the, 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 the hypothesis is that virtual reality helps to the co-creation. We imagine what could be the solution and once we have some more ideas on model, uh, the ideas to transform to reality. So we go back to the work, to the sanding, dismantling, uh, and sampling for at the end to say, okay, this and this part, maybe we can use uh, wood, but we can use also 3D printed or recycled plastic. So in that way, we are not only try to recuperate not only plastic but also other type of materials. And Sorry, based Fabio, on that, I'm going to have to uh, get you to summarise the end of your talk. I'm afraid. Okay. As much as I'd love to keep hearing your talk. Just for finish, <laughs> what I wanted to stress is that for me and the future is that we need to imagine what is the micro urban industrial manufacturing and also to relate that this is a bottom-up approach and correlate that how these units needs to interact with ecosystem services and to also to imagine the material and process and this lead me to the solution or I proposed the solution that I see last week about the uh, recycling. What is the, I know that this the recycling is not going to resolve the plastic problem but at least gives a break for what could be the next solution for plastic waste uh, in the future. And this is something that our next speaker maybe can talk about. Us. Sorry for the time, uh, sorry for the... That's quite all right. Uh, as I said, I could keep listening to you quite happily, but unfortunately we're just on a time yeah. schedule. Um, thank you so much for a really enlightening talk there, Fabio. I have so many questions, but unfortunately I'm gonna have to hold back for now on those and maybe perhaps beyond this session, we could um, have a, an exchange on some of those. Um, I'll invite other people to put some messages into the chat if you have any questions for Fabio. Hopefully, Fabio, you may uh, remain with us for a while to be able to answer any yeah, of those yeah, as I, they come I, in. In the um, chat, I can some elements. Thank you, excellent. everyone. That's great. Thank you once again.